This Axiom guide is for Axiom version 1.5.1, which has support for Minecraft Java versions 1.20.1 and 1.20.2. In this guide I will show you the ins and outs of all features, as well as, of course, how to install the mod. If you do need support in installing, as you may be running on a Mac or have other issues, I recommend going to their Discord that I'll link to. Installing Axiom Now to get started. For your Minecraft to be able to support Axiom, you will need to install the Fabric API. To make this a whole lot easier, I recommend getting the Curse Forge Launcher. In this launcher you will have the ability to make custom profiles, like the ones I have here. Simply click on the Create Profile at the top right. Choose the Minecraft version you'd like to use, in this case 1.20.2. Select Fabric and choose the name that you'll recognize in the future. Then click Create. Now that you've created this profile, the Fabric API will already be installed for you. After you've downloaded Axiom from one of the links provided, click the three dots next to play. Then go to Open Folder. This will open your folder with all your mods. Go into Mods and paste in any mods that you would like to use in this version. After you've successfully put your jar into this folder, close it and click play and then simply click play. How do I use Axiom on multiplayer? Axiom can be used on paper by downloading the plugin on Modronin or by installing the mod the same jar as the client on a fabric server in the mods folder. If you are building on your server for commercial purposes, please consider supporting the mod by purchasing a commercial license. To start using Axiom, I'm going to be creating a new single player world. Now that you have everything working, let's start building. Let's have a look at your hotbar. You will notice that there is a new icon field on the right. This sidebar, as Axiom calls it, can be opened and scrolled through by pressing your left alt key. The sidebar features six ways to interact with blocks. Let's start with the move tool. You can select two points by using your left and right mouse buttons. To add areas to your selection, click on the blocks you'd like to add with your middle mouse wheel, as stated when using this tool. Each tool will give you tips on how to use it. After you've finished your selection, use the mouse wheel to scroll in the direction you'd like your selection to be moved, showing you a preview. You can either press the left mouse button to cancel, or the right mouse button to confirm. In this and other modes, you can also flip your preview with Ctrl F or rotate with Ctrl R. So here we have our selection. We can scroll up. Now if we hit Ctrl R, we are rotating. And if we hit Ctrl F, we can also flip our selection. Moving on to the clone tool. The clone tool, as the name suggests, can either clone or, in this case, copy what you've selected as you move it to other areas. So again, selecting and now we can clone it leaving the original but having a clone a copy of it and again we can confirm and we could keep confirming it until we cancel it now we have two the stack tool is in some sense similar to the clone tool however rather than cloning just one iteration we can clone multiple iterations over longer distances as much as we want we can even go into the third dimension with it now that we've gone over the stack tool, let's look to the next one, the smear tool. The smear tool can be used exactly like the stack tool, however, it can also be used in the third dimension. So if we select these two pieces of grass, we can smear this along. However, if we now look, for instance, upwards or downwards, we can create slopes in multiple directions, so even along any axis that you'd like. This makes the tool especially great for making roofs, say we have one block, we can select both points, go up and go to the side and make a nice clean edged roof. Another great way of using the smear tool instead of the stack tool is the ability that it has when interacting with other solid blocks. As you can see, it will continue and interact with the first solid block that it encounters 
but we'll continue on on the other side. Moving on to the extrude tool, so I can expand by clicking the right mouse button or I can shrink the area where this block exists down by one. This makes it a great tool for filling holes like this one. Last but not least, we have the erase tool. And as the name suggests, one point, two point, press the delete button and it's gone. Now let's have a look at the builder mode. Going back to our normal hotbar, we can once again press left alt and open this lovely builder context menu filled with lots and lots of features. First, let's look at the hotbar swapper. As you can see, I have my hotbar from earlier selected, but now I can also scroll through different hotbars that I'd like to have. Maybe you're working on a pumpkin build, but then again, you don't want to get rid of these blocks. You want to use some flowers instead. There you go. Scroll one down. Now you've got your amethyst clusters. Scroll two down and the sky is your limit. Now let's have a look at the left hand side. These are the capability. No clip allows you to move through any solid block. Angel placement, place blocks midair. Fast place, one of my favorites, allows you to place blocks very fast in a controlled manner. This coupled with infinite reach removes the reach limit, allowing you to place block infinitely far away from you inside or your render distance. The tinkerer allows you to go through all different interactions of say a block to the stair variants just by clicking on that block. The no updates prevents triggering neighboring updates when placing or breaking block. So in the case you don't want to update water blocks, you could use this feature to stop that pesky water flowing everywhere. Force place bypasses any block placement restriction. Replace mode, very useful in replacing very quickly, especially great with infinite reach and fast placer. And then bulldozer, hold down left button, break blocks very fast. I mean, what's more satisfying than that? In addition to all these things, you can also switch your game mode very easily at the top and most satisfying of all, change your fly speed, making you zoom through the sky. Under the fly speed menu, there's also an additional button that allows you to change certain limits like the liquid opacity, the minimum brightness, or say the flight momentum. I've got mine set to zero, but I know a lot of people like their flight momentum. So here you can change it to 100% again. Editor mode. The editor mode includes a large variety of tools and operations for large scale world manipulation, painting, terraforming and sculpting. You open editor mode by pressing the right shift button once. At the top, we've got the main menu bar. Going from left to right, we've got file to import or export the world edit format of schematics. We've got edit where you can redo, undo, copy paste or save blueprints, which we'll get to later. We've got select where you can mask, expand, shrink, distort, smooth, different selections. We've got view, very useful in some cases if you want to show different biomes, change the UI scale of this menu, change the minimum brightness or in the use case of if you're doing terrain with a lot of water, change the liquid opacity to maybe something a bit lower that you can see through the water. We've also got create where you can create different things like say a cuboid with many different options. Also, when having one of these small windows, as you can see, if I drag it along the screen, it will give, give me various options of where on the screen I could put this. Operations like fill, very useful if you're only trying to do walls, for instance. Well, nearest, replace, type, replace, tool mods. Currently, we've got none selected. Window shows you all the different kinds of windows that you could have open in this editor mode. Then, of course, we've got help. So if you want direct link to their Discord server, to the documentation that I've been using, it's right there for you to use. Redo any keybinds because you're not happy or you've got some other mod that's using the same keybinds. Maybe go into this menu and change them. Style editor. Before we move on to the magical tools, let's go over some other parts of this menu. We of course have the tools and each tool will have a tool options. There's also the clipboard, which is currently empty as we've not selected anything nor done anything like control C to copy. So we've got currently an empty clipboard. We've also got the target info. If we press on this and hover above any block, we can currently see that we're hovering above a grass block in the Minecraft planes biome at a position and at a distance. Then we've also got a palette, which we can click on and add to. The palette additions come from the active block. In this case, if we move it up a bit above, 
we can also change the snowy state of it. All the states of a block can be controlled over the active block, and we can also select any active block. Now we've also got our history, so with all the other commands we already did, so we can see all the history of all the things we have already done. Now getting into the world properties, I've already opened the time tab as I needed to freeze time. So you can also set the weather and pause the weather for instance. You can set different things about the player and different things about blocks, like for instance the fire tick, which you may want to turn off. Now we're gonna go over the tools that you so dearly want to know so much about. First, we're gonna go over the selection tools, like the magic select, like in Photoshop or any other image editing program, you can just select the block of your choosing. Once you've selected something, you can undo the selection by just pressing enter. You can also move your selection by pressing Control X. You can change the limit, you can change the range, you can change the mode. So currently we have add mode, we could also subtract things from it. On box select, we can select a box. We can move the selection up or down. We can select the different cubes on different sides to manipulate the different sides. We can also use our scroll wheel to manipulate the box selection. And once we are happy with the selection, we just press enter. Now I'm gonna use my WASD keys to maybe zoom out a bit, maybe press control and hold my mouse button to move around in the menu so I can see my selection from all different sides. Now we're currently in add mode, but we could go to subtract mode. So when we create a new box and increases and press enter, we've now subtracted the one box from the other. Another selection tool is of course the freehand select where you can just use a ball, in this case a sphere, to add to your selection. This shape can also be changed to of course a cube or an octahedron. The ruler tool should be quite self-explanatory. You add points, you can measure distance. It can be very useful in the case you want to get exact measurements of your build very quickly. Moving on to the painting tools, we've got the simple painter which just uses your active block. So let's use stripped oak wood to paint across the surface. You can of course change the axis of your wood. Moving on to the noise painter, gets a bit more complicated, but it's not too hard to understand. We've again got the simple radius and scale, 3D mode in the sense three-dimensional noise patterns. There are different noises. Some are more splattered, some are white noise, like you might see on your TV screen. You will have metaball, which is more blobby in shape. You have the whirly, which has more kind of a cell shape to it. And you can change a lot of different parameters. I'm gonna go for Voroni edges, as it gives kind of a city feeling in some sense, like little pockets with pathways in between. Now we can add different blocks to it and change the percentages. But when we paint, we create this grid-like structure. Now, when you've done anything in this mode, like create something in the painting or the sculpting sense, you can also press Ctrl Y to get rid of stuff. And if you do want to redo it, Ctrl Z. Moving on to the biome painter, now that we've got this lovely grass patch, we can use, again, a sphere, different types of biomes. In this case, of course, we are using chunk-based painting rather than block-based painting. And now we can also see our different biomes that we've got on in our biome viewer that we had on earlier. Removing the biome, we go to the Clentaminator. Maybe you want some fertile ocean floor. We're gonna just stick with grass today. We're just gonna take some grass, some grass, and some tall grass. I think I've said grass enough times. Again, you can just paint your foliage onto the ground. Depending on the different terrain you've got, you can also change it to dirt very quickly. It's got some nice coloring in there. I think it's a great tool to quickly shape your terrain. Moving on to the last of the painting tools, the gradient tool. Much like the noise painter, you can add different blocks into here to form a gradient. There's different shapes. In this case, I'm going to increase my radius to something a bit bigger. And here, depending on the direction you drag, the size of your radius and the noise that you put into it, 
can change the different noise types. You can add different blocks from your palette here and drag them over to not only the middle screen into a selection, but also into different blocks that you may be using for your gradient brush, like so. This can also be used when going into the different painters, like the noise painter, and adding blocks into the block count. Here's a quick look at tool masks. When going to tool masks, we can go to edit, and we get this lovely little window. We can add it to the bottom here, making it nice and flush, that we only want to use this block. To get the block for our palette, we can also middle click on the block on the screen, for instance, the stripped crimson stem, and drag it across for our mask. Then in our painter, we can use a different block to paint only over this type of block. There are many different masks that you may want to use, but most notable of all are the angle masks. For instance, one could add the all mask, insert the block, and angle mask. Set this angle mask to a value of, for instance, negative 60 with this symbol. Going over to the painter with this, you can start painting only the surface of blocks. Experiment around by changing the symbol the other way greater than or equal to 50 and paint only the underside of blocks. Now let's get to the terrain part of this section, the drawing and editing tools. The freehand draw, very simple. It's a sphere, it's a cube, it's an octahedron, it's a radius, and you just paint with a block. Now to my favorite sculpting tool, the sculpt draw. I really like this tool as you can change the strength which actually makes it higher than the kind of normal block that you have. And as you can see now, it actually takes the stone. And I like not using denoise, as denoising gives it a very smooth feeling. I, when I start my terrain, I like to have a bit of a, a rougher feeling. Here, if I change the strength to five, you can really see the power of this tool. Now going over to the rock tool, rather than the sculpt tool, this kind of just stays in the shape that you give it. It also takes the active block. It's very soothing and smoothing, but that all depends on your settings. Now going on to the weld tool, as the name suggests, if you have anything to do with metal, metal working, you'll understand that this can weld or weld join your terrain together very quickly. It's an additive tool. In opposite, we have the melt tool, which as the name suggests, takes terrain away. Last but not least, if this is really a terrain tool, it's up to question, but maybe it is. Maybe I'm just not far enough. We can create some letterings. Hello world. If I press enter and I can now move it. That's also a nice thing about these little boxes. You can move anywhere around your world and then press enter. Now you've got some text. Now we can move on to the stamp tool. I've created this lovely, sad looking palm tree. Maybe it won't be sad anymore when we give it some friends. So the stamp tool works with blueprints. How do you create a blueprint, you ask? Well, let me show you. Let's get our box select back. If we box select our little palm tree here and increase the height, take away that one block below, you can see it's no longer red. And just see that we've got every little bit selected. Let me move around, it looks like we do. We can now hit Ctrl C, which will put it into our clipboard. Now if we hit Ctrl P, we can give it a little name. So you can see I am the author of this, which means that if you want to give this blueprint away, you can always see the author of the blueprint as well. So call this a palm tree. Now I can add a little tags like it is small maybe it's a palm I can create that tag and maybe you'll find it in a jungle and now I just click save this will open the blueprint folder where you can just save your dot bp for blueprint into your axiom blueprints folder you can find this folder by going into your version of minecraft finding the config folder it should be in the same place where you'd find your mods folder Go to Axiom Blueprint and then save that file there. Now we can go back to the stamp tool. We can add Blueprint and look, there it is. 
our little palm that we just created. It also has all the tags that we've given it. Clicking on the palm, we can select it. We can give it a minimum spacing and start placing it everywhere. We can also change if it's an immediate placement or deferred. Deferred means that when we let go of our mouse, we can change each individual palm tree location. If you had terrain where you want the palm trees or the trees or the assets that you're making to sit one block lower, just simply go to the second number and make it one lower. This will move your asset one block down when you put it in. Moving on to the path tool, a simple complicated tool. Select points where you'd like your path to go along. Select the type of path that you'd like, maybe something more loopy like this one. Select where you'd like these points to go. Maybe move this one a bit up so you can actually see the path. Set the radius of it. Select a different block, say for instance granite, and just move that along until you get the perfect positioning for it. Now I've gone to the back of the terrain to use the flood fill tool. As its name suggests, um, well, flood fill an area. Moving on to uh, three tools, the height map tools. First one is elevation. As its name suggests, it can create elevations. Then we have the flatten, which takes the, the block that you're on. So up here, we'd increase. From down here, we decrease by one block. And then my favorite tool, the slope tool. Select two points, hold your mouse button, and simply drag along where you'd like the slope to be. Now we've got a nice, perfect slope. You can change the steepness, you can change the height, the radius, and you can also set it to a cone. So maybe in one of the corners that you have, simply click and then move around, creating a lovely cone shape at the bottom. Now for the last but not least manipulation tools, smoothing smooths the edges of blocks. Then we've got distort, which with lots of different settings can distort your terrain. Then uh, we've got roughen, which will in this case roughen up your terrain quite quickly and substantially, making it look like an anarchy server once again. Then we move on to shatter. Similarly, to the noise painter with the Veroni noise, this will do something along those lines, but rather than adding painted blocks, it can remove blocks. The extrude tool, similarly to the extrude that you had on your hotbar earlier, you can, in this menu, click on the things that you'd like to extrude up or down by clicking shrink on the mode. If you'd like to see me use all these tools in unison, watch part 2 of this video. I'll be using Axiom in future builds as well as on live streams. So be sure to subscribe to not miss out on future Axiom updates and content. A big thank you to Soko and Mulberry for making Axiom. Please show them some love on their Discord and consider donating to them so they can keep improving Axiom.